Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Galleon, 5th edition. I just want to talk a little bit about how I study from textbooks like this one. Hopefully this would be helpful to other people who are trying to make this same journey. Usually your teachers would tell you to try to understand the definitions and do the exercises. And that is of course good advice. I just want to say something a little more specific. So I'm just going to use chapter 2 as an example. So for a chapter like this one, it's not a very long chapter, so if you just read it through from end to end, not really stopping to ponder anything, it'll take you about 10 minutes, maybe 15. But that's not the way to go about something like this one, because some mistakes that students would make is they would read it and they would try to memorize the definitions, and then they would try to memorize some of the theorems, maybe a couple of the proofs. But here's the thing. These definitions are not there just to be memorized. They're there to be applied. So you need to be able to recognize the way these definitions operate on specific examples and be able to understand why they operate the way they do and also be able to understand where they apply and don't apply. For example, something like closure. Don't just accept that closure is what it is here. Try to see some examples where closure applies and doesn't apply. For example, they give you the definition of a group and you see these three axioms, but then they go on to say, be sure to verify closure when testing for a group. See example five. Now, they're drawing your attention to this example for a reason. If you look at example five, it says the set of positive irrational numbers together with multiplication actually doesn't form a group, even though it satisfies all three of these axioms, and that's because closure fails. So that should stick out to you, and every time you see something that is apparently a group, you should check closure. And oftentimes, new students who are just starting abstract algebra will forget about closure. They will focus mostly on these three properties. Also, there's another tip. When encountering a particular group for the first time, determine whether or not it's abelian. See, these little tips in these discussions. Don't ignore them. They're very important. You should take note of them and act on them. You know, recently I've been reading a book called Atomic Habits. Like, it basically says that there are a lot of small changes you can make if you want to have a habit of doing something, but you find that you haven't been able to get to it. So people are always saying things like, I want to read more. I want to go to the gym more. I want to do this more. I want to do that more. But they never seem to get around to it. And similarly, something like abstract algebra, you might say, I want to be able to study it more effectively. I want to be able to do the questions, like the problems. Students would say something like, I understand the definitions, but I can't do the problems. Well, if you can't do the problems, it suggests that you don't really understand the definitions enough. You might know how to quote them, but when you're presented with an example, you find yourself lost. And that's because you need to change what you're doing. So I'm going to get very specific about my advice now. When you encounter an example, you should make a promise to yourself like this. Develop a habit or a ritual. Every time I encounter an example, I will write down whether the, the thing that is supposedly a group is abelian or not. I will write it down and why. Do that for any example that you encounter. Because you won't have to put any effort into memorizing it when you do this, if you keep up with that habit, because by the, how many examples do we have here? We have 10 examples. No, actually we have many more than that. 20 so far. Yeah. Okay. So 20 examples. If you've done that 20 times, just whenever you encounter an example, write down whether or not it's a billion and why. So if you want, if you write down that it is a billion, show that two elements commute, show that all the elements commute. If you think it's not abelian, pick two elements that do not commute and write it down. So this is what you need to do in order to really get a handle of what something like abelianness means in terms of different kinds of examples, whether it be matrices or permutations or whatever it is you want to consider. So also you should keep in mind some non-standard examples because everybody knows addition on the integers. You know, multiplication on the rationals. But what about something like this? This one is called, you know, the trend. Well, the elements of them are called translations. So I'm going to just refer to it as the translation group. This is an example that you don't really see referred to very often, at least when you're a new student. This one 
probably doesn't crop up as much. Keep it in mind, write it down and actually test whether each of the axioms of a group hold in this set. Because yes, they tell you it's a group, but don't just accept it. Write it down. Actually write it down. If you do that, you will remember these things for sure because they will be burned into your brain. And you will definitely be able to tackle examples that you haven't seen before when you get the exercises. So at the end of a chapter like this, you have a lot of exercises with many different situations that will be presented to you, do them. They will reveal things to you about groups that you never thought about while going through the chapter. And you'll be that much more prepared to tackle these exercises if you develop the habit like what I suggested before. Also, something like this, elementary properties of groups, they present them as theorems. Don't just remember the statement of the theorem to be able to repeat it in an exam if you're asked. That's not very useful. Understand these theorems as consequences of the previous definition that you were given, the definition of a group. You know, these axioms back here, those theorems are consequences of these axioms. So think about it that way and carefully try to understand the proof and also understand why you would need to care about this consequence, why you would need to prove it, why is it not obvious and write it down. Write down something. Write down something about it. Something other than the statement of the theorem. So when you develop a habit like this one, every time I see an example, I will write such and such. Every time I see a theorem, I will write such and such. You will have a much, much better understanding of anything you study in abstract algebra. And that's all I have for now. So hopefully this has been beneficial. 